Okay, so the boys season 4 trailer is now out and throughout this video we're going to be breaking it all down. CCXP is now happening in Brazil and over the weekend we're getting some very big first looks. That includes this, House of the Dragon and Godzilla X Kong which will be dropping tomorrow. Obviously I'm going to be covering it all, very excited, so make sure you subscribe to not miss those videos. However, I just want to get straight into this and just to set the groundwork here's where we left things off. Season 3 had Butcher taking V24, which in the end left him with a death sentence. That's given the man about 18 months to live, and now he's got to ramp things up to finish his mission. As for Homelander, he murdered a Starlighter at a protest, and since then he's been gearing up to go on trial. Now we know this because of Gen V, which if you haven't seen, what the, what the bloody hell's wrong with you? I'm going to talk about what happens there, so if you don't want spoilers for that, then please skip ahead. It's kind of difficult to talk about where things are with this if we don't touch upon that, but I'd rather you experience all the twists and turns unspoiled. Boiled down to as spoiler light as I can get it though, that show had a virus being developed in the school. This attached itself to the cells in Compound V, and in the end it only targeted soups. Completely killing them, this could wipe them all out, and we ended with Butcher coming across the experiments. Just before that, we had Homie watching things fall in place too, after he'd arrived at the school and apprehended our heroes. They were going to take the fall for what had been a massacre, with him watching from Vore Tower as the messages piled in. Definitely go check out that series, as I can't overstate how good it actually is, and yeah, you, you might have to watch that to understand what's going on here. Now this position is sort of where we pick up in the trailer with Homelander again up in his room. This is a similar thing to what we got with the season 3 trailer with a lot of the shots mirroring how that opened up too. Every time focus is given to Homelander's back, I can't help but think how they've given a lot of focus to the American flag. That's something that Shaw and Eric Kripke's discussed throughout the seasons and he's gone into what angles they're satirising in this one. Now disclaimer mate, I don't really care about your politics, I don't really care what they are and to be honest, I'm not fully in the loop of how stuff's going in the US at the moment. Unless it's George Santos, because man said he produced a Spider-Man musical on Broadway, and, and as soon as I heard that, I had a I had a cheeky little look. Either way though, yeah, I'm going to say what the producers of the show have said, so any allusions to real-life politicians is from their mouth and not mine. We keep keeping it as apolitical as possible, but it's very difficult to do with the boys. The Homelander being on trial is meant to loosely be similar to what's happening with Trump's trial at the moment. Many people also took the ending shot of Gen V as being a similar smile to DeSantis and Eric Kripke's brought him up when talking about the show. He said, They're up against a DeSantis ticket. That's part of the fun of getting into season 4, which we're just figuring out for this, but he's got a crazy ticking clock. He's got so much to do that he hasn't done. So Homelander is going all out there while he's getting scrutinised in the public eye and it's clear that Vor are now fully backing him. Not only is Cameron Coleman covering the story in his favour, but we've also got Ashley out here promoting the hashtag home free. Now I think this is all going to lead us to the White House, which is a big thing that happens in the comics. Homeland ends up creating a soup uprising which was somewhat hinted at during Gen V. Man ended up taking down the heroes, and this was after realising that they'd been attacking other soups. The two behind the massacre were propped up as the hero, and he's clearly warning people for his army. Now in the comics, he ended up storming the White House and killing the then president who was called Victor Newman. In the show, we've of course got Victoria Newman, but they've changed things up beyond the character's gender. Victoria here is also a soup and she tried to dispose of the virus during Gen V. I actually think she might be the one who helps to get the heroes out in that, but that's just one big Newton, 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 Now her campaign with Robert Singer is really mounting up, leading her going right to Washington. I feel like she's then going to be someone that takes Singer out, which is something that Vic also did to the president in the comics. He then got made the country's president, and then Homelander ended up killing him in the end. So yeah, I kind of feel that's where things could be going, as Homie feels like he's getting more and more powerful. Now on the flip side of this, we have Butcher with the virus, which is also similar to something that he did in the comics. Butcher found a way to kill all the soups on Earth by using a specific frequency that blew off their heads. This is likely what they're going to try and use the virus for, with it being Butcher's final act like how it is in the comics. At that point, Homelander wasn't around anymore, but I can't see how you do this show without him. So instead, I think the virus thing will happen while he's still alive, and we'll have Butcher probably die from his own ailments after failing to release it. At least I think anyway. Now the show and comics are never one for one, and we have lots of new elements that are involving Ryan. Kripke stated that he's going to be a big driving force of this season too, and as I'm sure you all know, the kid wasn't in the comics either. 
There were theories during season 2 that he might be a version of Soldier Boy, but these were all cast out after Jensen Ackles came in. Still though, he's actually his grandson and there are several versions of Soldier Boy in the comics, so maybe those three times weren't too far off. No, I'm such an idiot on it. Now, I wonder if he's going to take up the mantle from his dear old granddad and then you'll have a father and son dynamic like Batman and Damian Wayne. You also have Butcher trying to lead him away from the dark side too, with Kripke comparing the situation to the sitcom My Two Dads. Huge shoutouts to Collider for compiling some info about this and talking about every time he's touched upon it in an interview. They stated that Kripke views the Butcher and Homelander as parallels, stating he considers their relationship like Batman and the Joker or Holmes and Moriarty. Aside from a deep personal hatred, there lies an intimate understanding of one another. With the stakes rising as Ryan grows up, the two men have much more in common than they'd like to admit. Kripke stated that the next season will also largely focus on the rise of Victoria Newman. Morally grey soup in the White House that can kill anyone instantly will likely be an issue for both Vought and the boys. Huge shoutouts again to Collider for that and we also know on top of this what the episodes are going to be called. The names are Department of Dirty Tricks, Life Among Septics, We'll Keep the Red Flag Flying Here, Wisdom of the Ages, Beware the Jabberwock My Son, Dirty Business, The Insider and Assassination Run. All of them are named after comic issues, other than we'll keep the red flag flying here and beware the Jabberwock, my son. Now, the latter comes from a poem, whereas the flag comes from the song Red Flag by Jim Connell. Assassination Run focuses on the calm before the storm, with it setting up Homelanders rising before everything falls apart. I can see that leaving things on a cliffhanger, and then it'll all ramp up for the events of Season 5. And on top of this, there's also going to be two new soups added into the mix. They are Firecracker and Sister Sage, but neither of them appear in the comics, so there's no real predictions for where we can go, but the, you know what, the creative team always smash it with a new character, so I'm hyped to see what happens with them. And when discussing the pair, Kripke said, These new soups are some of the best and craziest ever written for the boys. You are going to love them. And by love them, I mean be absolutely horrified and a tiny bit nauseous. Welcome to the family, you guys. But Simon Pegg's also said he's appearing in four of the episodes and that this is going to be the craziest season yet. On top of this, we also have Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who many thought was going to be playing the character Tech Knight. As we know, that won't be the case, but he has described his character as making the show filthier. Now, the details in the trailer is that we see Vought Towers still being reconstructed, which we also saw during Points of Gen V. The middle floor is completely wiped out, and that's due to the carnage that happened at the end of Season 3. There's also the voiceover talking about them being mythical godlike creatures, which I think just kind of riffs on the, the ideas that go along with the Justice League. We also see Butcher at a Vought video and can catch Polarity standing to the left on a poster. Polarity was a character that appeared in Gen V and V was basically breaking his body down similar to what it's doing here with Butcher. They also talk over the top about how all democracies fail and that's purely because people are absolutely stupid. She says the F word but I can't, I'm not going to say it here. Uh, but yeah, it just kind of gives the idea of where they're heading with the series. There's clearly a divide forming between two sides, with both Starlight and Homelander's fans fighting against each other. The elite and those causing the division, they're not really involved, and it kind of speaks to the, the general feeling that a lot of people have about politics in general. We also see my man checking out an octopus, and I, uh, keep just keep it in the bedroom, mate, and everything will be fine. You might notice as well that there's a little deep figure to the right-hand side, and it kind of speaks to the relationship that these two are now in. Now from here we cut to what I think's a conspiracy theory fair, as we can see the banner along the top says, there's no conspiracies or coincidences. There's also a Secrets Revealed Soldier Boy poster to the right, which talks about how he's being held captive by the CIA. That's basically how we left the character in Season 3, and it's all unfolding and slowly starting to come out. You might also notice that Mother's Milk has an Eric B and Rakim t-shirt, and the character always wears hip-hop inspired clothing. Now from here we cut to Frenchie and can see Jitter Bean Coffee Company boxes to the right. Jitter Bean Coffee is what's basically the coffee company in the boys and it's nice to see this just kind of layered throughout the environment. Homelander at this point compares himself to Caesar and we see him also gripping Ryan's hand. At this point we see a girl who's got like some snake mouths I think it is and yeah she's just going all out and attacking people with deadly force. The person that she's going against is Kimiko and it shows the kind of monster level soups that are out there. We also see there's a play on the nativity, with Queen Maeve there, but she's being played by an actress. Everyone at the moment thinks that Queen Maeve is dead, and I'm guessing that this is sort of a tribute to her. Don't know how it ties in with the nativity, but potentially they're talking about the Chosen One, which Homelander could be propping himself up as. 
You also see that someone's in the black noir costume, and though we don't know who replaced him, yeah, something's going on here. The character was of course killed by Homelander in season 3, and I am kinda wondering exactly what's going on. Because he wears a mask, no one knows who's under it, and thus they can easily cover up Homelander's murder and just put a new person in. You also see someone who's a bit like Multiple Man, and he pulls himself apart, making duplicates of himself. This kinda reminds me a lot of the thing and the head splitting stuff that they did in that movie. Next we see V24's overloading in Butcher and it's making me think he might have taken even more. The guy's on borrowed time as it is, so yeah, why wouldn't he just take something if it's gonna give him more powers? You also see Cameron Coleman and Ashley and she's clearly doing some, some, I don't know if I can say it on YouTube without getting demonetized, but she's doing some things where she mentions crushing his balls. Ooh. From here we cut to A-Train looking at something in a jar and I actually think that this might be the virus. Might be a reach there but yeah it just seems very strange and clearly moving towards him almost like it's after the V. And that wraps up the trailer and we also know we're going to be getting a big spin-off with the boys Mexico coming soon. It's also going to be more seasons of Gen V and Kripke said that season 4 won't be the end of this either. Normally I get a bit worried when they start announcing 40 different spin-off shows as you never know if the quality will still be retained. Still though, Gen V gave me faith and I think they can probably get away with doing more stuff. That looks so good and season 4 looks amazing so I'm really hyped to see where things go next. This looks like it's building off what's come before and taking things in really big directions that feel like they're just bouncing perfectly off the comics. Obviously, let me know your thoughts below if you agree or not, and if you enjoyed the video, then please hit the thumbs up button. If you want to support us for just 99 cents a month, then please also consider hitting that join button too. You'll get early access to videos every week so you can see our breakdowns before anyone else. Huge thank you to everyone who's supporting us and it helps us stay independent and keeps our staff happy. At least they tell me that. Better not be slagging the boss off buying his bag. Anyway, if you want something else to watch, then please check out our breakdown of our theories for Invincible Season 2 which will be linked on screen now. That's coming out in 2024 and I can't wait to see what Amazon do with it. But out of the way, huge thank you for sticking through this video and hopefully I'll see you right over on the next one. Just realised I haven't even introduced myself yet. My name's Paul and if this is your first time here, then thanks for sitting until the end. Peace.